Greetings, my lovelies. Hi, welcome back to another Emmy Eats. Today, I'll be eating Taiwan. So this package was sent to me by Mr. R via Canada. Thanks so much, Mr. R, for sending me this great package of Taiwanese treats. For those of you unfamiliar with Taiwan, Taiwan is a small island located off the southeast coast of mainland China. So Taiwan was formerly known as Formosa, and like many places, it has a very colorful history, including a period of Japanese occupation. So some of these treats will reveal some of that history. Let's start with this treat. These are pineapple cakes. I grew up eating these, actually, and like them very much. Individually wrapped, there is a cute little pineapple cake. Pineapple-y and buttery. Kind of an artificial buttery smell, to be honest. A little bit like margarine. So let's give that a taste. Here we go. Itadakimasu. Mm-hmm. So in the interior, it's a little bit of pineapple jam, but it's got a kind of a chewy texture to it. It's sticky and chewy, and then the outside is flaky and buttery. It's delicious. Mr. R said these are flavored with five spice. Indeed, very strong smell of five spice, which is a combination of five different spices, including star anise and clove. So very interesting spice combination, but used a lot in Chinese and Taiwanese cuisine. So here it is. Very interesting. They're almost translucent, and they're dusted in this kind of powder. Most of dry bean curds are savory, although sweet ones do exist. Wow. Hmm. Hmm. Very interesting texture. Simultaneously crumbly and rubbery at the same time, kind of like a bit like an eraser. But the flavor is really nice. Slightly sweetened, full of five spice flavor. Kind of some soy sauce in there as well. It's the texture that's very curious though. Interesting. This is called wax gourd drink. I've never had this in drink form before, although I've had it many times in soups. My mom actually used to grow this in our garden. Hmm. Doesn't really smell like much. Let's see what it looks like in. Ooh! It has an ambery kind of apple juice color to it. Come by. Oh! It's a lot nuttier than I thought it would be. It's good, I like it. The level of sweetness is quite nice. It almost tastes a little bit like honey. It reminds me a little bit of hojicha, which is a roasted tea in Japan. Uh, but this, of course, is sweetened, and hoji cha is not served sweetened, but really nice. Let's try this snack. And on here, it's called carrot biscuit, but Mr. R says it's actually more of a daikon biscuit. Daikon is a really long, white radish. This is what it looks like, little fried cracker squares. They don't really smell savory. It smells kind of just fried. Let's give it a taste. Here we go. Mmm! Mm mm-hmm. Also in my Emmy Eats Hawaii video, part two, I'll put that link down below as well. There was something called wonton pea, and it's very similar. It tastes like a fried wonton skin. It's a little bit thicker in thickness, a pinch of spice in there, and a little bit of sweetness, but mostly it's this kind of fried flavor. But there's a little bit of sweet saltiness, which hints to some MSG, but good. Kind of strangely addictive. So these snacks, Mr. R tells me, are translated to cow tongues. It's like a sweet cookie biscuit, and they call them cow tongues, not because they're made out of cow tongue, but they're shaped like a cow's tongue. Also, in one of my Emmy Eats Germany videos, I'll put the link down below, I ate a candy that was called cat's tongue, which is delicious. All right, so this looks like this. Oh my gosh, look at the size of this. Now I see why they call them cow's tongue. They're huge. Look at the size of that cookie. And that's why they call them cow's tongue, because there's a little bit of a brown streak in the middle. That's awesome. I love it. Mmm. 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 Mmm, that's nice. The outside is a little bit similar to those carrot snacks. Crisp and almost slightly fried, but in the middle is really great. There's a little bit of kind of caramel in the middle. So that makes it nice and sweet. And in terms of level of sweetness, I think this is very characteristic of what you might find in Asia, particularly China or Japan, in terms of level of sweetness. Not very sweet, just subtly so, and really great. These are translated into watermelon seeds. These two are seasoned with five spice. I'm really excited about this treat because it includes a seed cracker. So there are the seeds. Look at this thing. Isn't that interesting? Well, let's put it one in the cracker. I think you do it like that, and then you squeeze it. Whoa. Squeeze too hard. <laughs> nope. All right, here we go. Well, yeah, there, it just broke it. There's the seed, just like a pumpkin seed. Although, unlike a pepitas or a pumpkin seed, it is not green, it is white. Wow. I'm actually surprised how much of the five spice flavor actually gets inside the seed there. 
Quite strong, again, five spice flavor and quite salty. Good though. Nice and nutty and very much like a pumpkin seed. Delicious. This is called a Prince Snack. Very much like Baby Star Ramen. If you haven't seen that video, it's an old video I did when I was living in Japan. I'll put the link down below. And here's a seasoning pack and you add the seasoning to the ramen and you eat it, which is what I used to do as a kid anyways. It smells like instant chicken ramen. It smells great. This is my childhood. Here we go. Mm-hmm. It's crunchy and nutty from the ramen. And then it has the MSG chicken bouillon soup flavor base to it. It's great. I love it. Mm-hmm. This is a snack that's one of my son's favorites, and it's senbei. He says this particular brand of senbei is really important to Taiwanese culture because so many Chinese holidays revolve around offering food. Wang Wang, this company, very smartly had a campaign that said, no offering is complete without Wang Wang. So now this has become culturally tied to those holidays. There's two of them inside, and they're toasted. Mm-hmm. Delicious. They have a crisp, kind of styrofoamy texture, and then they're dusted and coated with a really lovely MSG, salty, savory coating. And they have a really nice kind of toasted flavor as well. They're delicious. In Japan, there are many, many permutations of senbei. This is the most typical, kind of a sweet and savory soy sauce coating on the outside, but there are seaweed ones and ones that have beans in them, but they're delicious. Love somebody, love it. Let's try another beverage. Look at this beautiful can. This is called apple sidra. It smells just like apple juice. Yay, this one's fizzy. Very similar color to the wax gourd, a little bit more amber. All right, let's give that a taste, come by. Hmm, it tastes a bit like apple juice. A little more sweet and less appley, but nice little effervescence to it. I like my apple juice a little less sweet, but yeah, not bad, nice and refreshing. I really like the effervescent fizziness of it. This, look at this huge thing. Isn't that great? It's called cubic pastry. He said it's descriptive of its shape rather than its taste. So let's see what the taste is. Here's a little pastry inside. It looks a little bit like a granola bar. It smells a little bit lardy and peanut buttery. All right, let's give it a taste. Here we go. Hmm. In terms of texture, it's flaky and crunchy and it has a little bit of a tooth to it, a little bit of a graininess, but the flavor is a little bit like peanut butter, but I think it's sesame. Hmm, hardly sweet at all. More like a biscuit or something that you have with tea. Not bad, nice. These two packages are called Kwai Kwai. It smells a little bit fishy. There's the puff snack itself, and it's dusted with this kind of brown seasoning powder. Let's give that a taste. Wow, that doesn't taste like five spice to me at all. It actually tastes more fishy to me. Very light and airy kind of corn snack. And then it's coated with this savory fish snack flavor. It tastes a little bit like mackerel or some of the furikake that you might have in Japan. The seasoning powder you put on rice. It's good, I like it. Ooh, it smells great. It smells coconutty and buttery. Mmm, mm-hmm. I like that. There's a corny flavor to it, and to my opinion, much lighter than a Cheeto puff. This one's sweet and coated with a very light, coconutty, buttery flavor to it. I love it. Mr. R asked me which one I prefer. I definitely prefer the sweet one. This last snack is called a yellow heart plum. It's a preserved plum covered in maltose. All right, let's give it a taste. Wow. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's a mouthful. It's a little difficult to eat. The outside is very, very sweet, like a hard candy. And then you get the salted plum, which is salty and has a little bit of natural licorice flavor, which again, isn't my favorite, but it's okay. It tastes a little bit like aspartame or artificial sugar to me. The thing that's really interesting about that candy is more that it's sweet and salty and actually quite surprising. I thought I wouldn't like it, but it's actually not bad. Alrighty, so that wraps up my first taste of Taiwan. Thanks so much, Mr. R, for sending me this great package via Canada of all these great Taiwanese treats. And thanks for including so much cultural information. I feel like I really learned something. So let me know in the comments below if any of these snacks are familiar to you or any snacks that you would like to see me eat. I'll see if I can find them. And yep, thanks you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoy that. I hope you guys learned something and I'll see you in my next video. Toodaloo, take care, bye. So this is a freeze dried meal and it's similar to some of the meals that they had on the Apollo and space shuttle flights. Then comes the fun part. Just pour in your glue mixture into your borax solution and you'll start making slime. <laughs>